Let's recap what we did in the previous part on lines. We're thinking of lines in two ways. We can think of it either as we pick two points, connect the dots, or if I have a single point, all I need to know is the angle of inclination as we go through the point. And then that's what we call slope. For the mechanics, if we're given two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, formula for the slope is just going to be rise over run. So that's the change in y, y2 minus y1, over change in x, x2 minus x1. And remember, it's important to have the indices lined up. In fact, it's fine if you have the ones first and then the twos. The minus signs will cancel out but you can't switch the ones and twos in only one place. Once we have this, if I have the slope and the y-intercept, so that's where x is equal to zero for the line, if it exists, then we have the slope-intercept form, which is the familiar y equals mx plus b. And we worked with that last time. Now, we want to work our way up to what we do when we have just two points, but we still need to go through the one point and slope model for another equation. Now, typically what's going to happen, it's very special to be given the y-intercept. So what happens, say, if you're given the slope at another point? Then we want to bring out what we call the point-slope form. So this looks like, okay, if we're given the slope m, and any point on the line x1, y1, we have y minus y1 equals m, x minus x1 in parentheses. Now, thing to note, x1 and y1 are just going to be numbers. So what will happen here when we multiply through by m, we distribute, we'll have mx minus mx1. mx1 will just be a number, y1's a number we move over, and then we just wind up again with y equals mx plus b. So this will go back to slope-intercept form. Where does this come from? Well, we just take our definition of slope, and I'm going to erase the 2's on y2 and x2. So we have, okay, and then also to make this a little bit easier to work with the fractions, I'm going to take m and put it over 1. Because if I take any number over 1, that's the same as the number. Now, when I have this, we could either cross multiply to get directly to our equation, or just for some practice with fractions, I'm gonna multiply both sides by x minus x1 over one to clear out the denominators. So what happens now? Well, on the left-hand side, it's m times parentheses x minus x1. We could take the one away in the bottom. That gives us the m times x minus x1 parentheses we have on the right-hand side. And then on the other side, the x minus x ones are going to cancel, giving us y minus y one over one. And then we have our point slope formula. Let's see how the equation works. First, we'll do a straight substitution. So we have find the equation of the line with slope three and through the point four comma minus three. First thing we should do we don't have the y-intercept, so we know we're going to use point-slope form of the equation of the line. So I just put down y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 in parentheses, and we're going to go and look and see what we already have. So I have slope 3, so m is 3, and we have a point. It's not the y-intercept, but not a problem. So we have x1 is 4, y1 is minus 3. We just drop our numbers into the equation. For care, I'll put the minus 3 in with parentheses so we don't lose our minus signs. And then I can go to work. So going from left to right, okay, we have y plus 3. And then I need to distribute the 3 to everything in the parentheses. So that's going to be 3x and then 3 times minus 4 is a minus 12. From here, we want to go to y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to add minus 3 to both sides to isolate the y, and then we wind up with y equals 3x minus 15. So for instance, now I know what the y-intercept is. It's 0 minus 15. We could check our work. This is a light check. What I can do is I know I have the point 4 comma minus 3 on the line. So if I put 4 in for x, we should get minus 3 out. 
And so when I check, I get 12 minus 15 is in fact minus three is promised. Now, for peak difficulty, okay, let's try. Find the equation of the line through the two points, seven comma minus two and three six. I put down point slope equation of the line. Okay, we're not given the y-intercept. So we have y minus y1 is m parentheses x minus x1. And I note the situation here, we're not given the slope and I have too many points as options for the x1 and y1. Okay, we could use either one of these. Now I have two points so I can go out and find the slope if needed. So what are we gonna do? I put down my equation for slope. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'll sub in as is. So the x2, y2, and x1, y1. We do our work. I use parentheses to take care of the double negative, and that gives me slope minus two. So now I've got the slope. We put it in, and I can go with either one of my points for the x1, y1. I'm gonna go with the three comma six because there are no signs on that, so I don't have to worry about making the double sign error. So that's just gonna give me, when we drop it in, y minus six equals minus two parentheses x minus three. Okay, we actually, we'll have a double negative here, but no problem. And so what do we do? We distribute, I get a minus two x plus six. We move the minus six to the other side as before, and then we get y equals minus two x plus 12. Again, We'll check our answer. Here you can do a strong check by putting both points into the equation, but we'll just do it for the other point that we didn't use. So if I check seven comma minus two, that means if I put seven in for X, we better get a minus two out. And then that's gonna give us a minus 14 plus 12, which is a minus two as promised. As a further application of the point slope formula, here are some important ideas we'll need for later on. So we have the notions of parallel and perpendicular. Now parallel lines in the plane, we could define that qualitatively as just a pair of lines that never intersect. But we note with this idea of slope, parallel just means looking at a picture that the slopes have to be equal. So if two lines are parallel and I know the slope of one of them, I get the other one for free by just doing nothing. Perpendicular, that means we have a pair of intersecting lines and when we look at the point where they intersect, the angle of intersection is 90 degrees or a right angle. So quantitatively, and we'll say a little bit about this on the next board, we'll say that two lines are perpendicular if when we multiply their slopes together, we get minus one, or if I'm given the slope of one of them, say M1, I get the slope of the other by flip and negate, put a minus sign in. Now, let's first just work with slopes and keeping straight what we do at parallel and perpendicular. Because we don't do anything with parallel, this is very easy to forget. Now, let's suppose we're given the slope of one line is given by M1 equal to 3 fifths. So if I have a parallel line to this line, the slope is just the same, it's 3 fifths. For the perpendicular, what do we do? We're gonna take the 3 fifths, flip it, turn it upside down, and then put a minus sign in front. So we'll get minus 5 thirds. For another example, so here, not a fraction, suppose slope of one of our lines is equal to minus six. For the parallel, we just repeat, the new slope will be on minus six. For the perpendicular, we'll note this is not a fraction, but not a problem. I can make it into a fraction by just putting it over one, because if I put one under any number, we have the same number. Now, for the perpendicular, what are we gonna do? We're gonna flip and negate, so I turn it upside down, put a minus sign out in front. Note, I'll use parentheses to make sure we don't lose any signs. 
we've got the double minus sign, which becomes a plus, and so the new slope is equal to 1 sixth. Now, we need trigonometry to completely explain the perpendicular equation, but we can at least look at some examples to convince ourselves it's probably true. For the first one, okay, this one's a little bit more concrete than the second one will be. Let's consider when first slope is one, second slope is minus one. So we multiply, we definitely get minus one coming out. Now, what does this mean? So let's suppose we're based at the origin. I take the one, I can write that as a one over one. And if you remember from last time, that says I can go from any point to another point on the line by just going right one and then up one. And we can keep repeating that. So for the picture, that's just gonna be this line going like this. And that's gonna give us 45 degrees with the positive X axis. Likewise for minus one, I'll write this as one over minus one. So here, this says whenever I go left one, I'm gonna go up one. And so we'll get this line here, 45 degrees with the negative x-axis now. And so that leaves left over in the middle a 90 degree angle. So perpendicular checks out for this example. Now in general, we can go through the same process and you could pick a few examples to convince yourself that things look like they're perpendicular when they come out. I'm gonna choose here, this is gonna be, we'll have the A equal to two and the B equal to three in my picture. But what's the idea? We go through the same way. If the first slope is B over A, then if we're base at the origin, I'm gonna get another point by going right A and then up B, giving us this line in the first quadrant or going starting in the first quadrant and then extending through. Then if we flip and negate, well, we'll read that as going by left by minus B and then up by A and then we can extend. And then those two lines, if we look at that, there's gonna be a right angle between them if we are good with our drawing. We check, we multiply those two, they definitely give us a minus one. And as noted, if you want this precise, you need techniques of trigonometry are pretty much gonna be um, surefire way of showing this. Now, let's look at some examples with parallel and perpendicular with the point slope equation. So problem, find the equation of the line parallel to y equals 4x plus 7 and through the point 2, 5. When we read these, okay, I have to look for either the words parallel or perpendicular. They're easy to read through and then not be sure what you're trying to do with the problem. But parallel is in here. And so immediately I think that means we're gonna have the same slope. That means I have a slope for the new line. I have a point for the new line. So the point slope equation is gonna be what we need to get the final answer. So what do we have? We have, okay, we know the slope is four. It's the same as the old slope. And the seven I don't need at all. I need the new point, which is two comma five. So that'll be the x1, y1 for the point slope equation. So we'll have, okay, you could just look it up if you forgot it, but y minus five equals four times parentheses x minus two. We distribute, we get four x minus eight. I add five to both sides to get to y equal to four x minus three. And then that's our answer. So here we know the y-intercept is zero comma minus three. And I have a light check. I can make sure our point actually stays on the line. So if I put in a two, I expect to get a five back. And so eight minus three is five as expected. To finish, let's consider a problem with perpendicular. This one will be peak difficulty for this section. It'll go much smoother if we have tight bookkeeping. So what do we have? Find the equation of the line perpendicular to, okay, the line's equation is 2x minus 3y equal to 12, and through the point 2 comma minus 4. Now, what do I need for a perpendicular line? Well, I'm gonna have to find the old slope 
convert it to the new slope. And then we know we're also given a new point. So this is just going to be point slope equation when we sort everything out. Problem is we're not given the old line as y equals mx plus b. If, we, if it was, we could just read off the old slope and we get to our answer quicker. So here what I need to do first is get this into slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, which means we need to isolate the y. What do I do? Well, we take our equation. I'm just going to um, move things around to make this easy to manipulate. I want to put the 3y on the right, so I'm going to move the 12 to the other side at the same time. So that's this bookkeeping here. Once we have this, 2x minus 12 equal to 3y, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That isolates the y, and then on the other side, note, I have to distribute that 3 into all parts. So that's going to give us y equal to 2 thirds x minus 4. Now, that's the old line, so we're not even close to done yet. So if you stopped here, that would be bad. What do we do? Well, now I've got the old slope, which is 2 thirds. If I want perpendicular, we're going to flip and negate. So I'm now going to have minus 3 halves, and now I can drop all of our data into point slope equation. So we'll have, okay, careful bookkeeping. I've got y minus a minus 4 equal to minus 3 halves, parentheses, x minus 2. Double negative means we have y plus 4. I distribute the minus 3 halves. We get minus 3 halves x plus 3. And then I want to move the 4 to the other side, giving us y equals minus 3 halves x minus 1. As usual, we have a light check. I could take our point, the 2 comma minus 4. If we put 2 into this equation, we're expecting to get a minus 4 out. I'll put the 2 in as a 2 over 1, so there's no confusion of where the 2 goes. And then we're going to wind up with a minus 4, as promised.